Hey guys, thanks for stopping by my shop. It's uh, Chuck. As you know, the channel's Outside Screwball. And uh, just appreciate you stopping by. Uh, as you can see, uh, got uh, balls over here and uh, some drawings up here on the whiteboard. Starting to work out uh, fixtures mm -hmm. to, so that I can grind multiple balls at the same time. So, not going to really have any kind of uh, new video for you today. Um, I've, I've been working on my uh, my screwy balls and uh, and been busy, so just not a lot of time. Uh, working on a three ball set. This was just a quick sample box I made the other day. My logo on it. So that's moving forward. Um, this isn't going to be the final box though. But uh, so, as you know, there's uh, some time on this video, though, and, and uh, so I'm actually going to show a rerun. Uh, I watch reruns all the time. Lately, I've been watching Two and a Half Men. I never watched it when it was live, and I've really been enjoying it. Uh, I've got a lot of new subscribers, getting real close to 5,000, so I'm just uh, assuming a lot of the new subscribers uh, probably have never gone back and looked at the... Uh, older videos that I've done. As uh, you might look, I've got uh, 170 some videos up. And uh, so the, the, this is going to be a rerun. And I'm kind of proud of it. Uh, hopefully the camera will focus. Uh, this is a stainless steel air fitting that came out of my hose reel. It's in my main shop. And uh, I've, uh, that's what this uh, rerun will be about, is the uh, build and test of the fitting that I, that I built to replace this guy. So, uh, I hope you enjoy it, and uh, I will see you next Tuesday, hopefully with some uh, current, uh, current uh, video um, and more of an update on the uh, screwy ball project. Okay? Again, thanks for stopping by and uh, talk to you soon. Hey guys, I thought I'd uh, maybe film this repair of my air reel. Um, the hose you see there, the blue one, is water. This is in the main part of my shop. The uh, air reel uh, has been leaking and I had to shut it off. So I repaired it uh, some years ago and uh, uh, pulled the reel out and going to attempt to repair again on it. Um, this hose reel is a Stuart Warner Alamite uh, and it came out of a Dodge dealership. It was probably built, the dealership was probably built in 1945, somewhere around there. And I ended up with the hose reels when they tore the... Uh, the dealership down somewhere in the 80s I guess uh, so they're quite old and uh, uh, here's the uh, hose reel on the on the uh, workbench um, the uh, this is the air fitting that's uh, that's leaking you can see where it's been blowing the um, I got a hold of uh, alamite and when I told him it was a Stuart Warner Alamite, he said, that's too old and doesn't matter what part numbers you have, uh, we don't have anything for that unit. So um, I'm going to take it apart. This is the back side of the unit. I started taking it apart. Um, I'll bring you back after I get uh, some of the initial surgery done. You don't have to watch me undoing uh, bolts and screws. Um, but i got to salvage this reel. All right, be back with you. Um, just uh, dawned on me, uh, the, if you can see here, I don't know how good the light is, um, but base, this, uh, there's a brass nut that goes into the fitting here. This, this part swivels, and this is where the issue is, and I've taken this apart before, but damn if I couldn't uh, get that broke apart while the reel was still up in the air. That's why it's down here on the deck, and we're going to go for... Uh, Go for a, see if we can break that loose, which I don't think so, and then we'll start surgery instead. Well, here's a little update. Um, as you can see, I've uh, taken it somewhat apart. 
uh, this fitting right here slides through and comes out the other side here. Um, and let's see if the camera will focus, but you can see that uh, putting a wrench on those, on those, there's a flat, there's two flats there to put a wrench on, and there's just not enough uh, surface area for the wrench to bite on, so I was actually starting to damage the threads there. That's why I ended up taking it apart. And my goal is to get that brass fitting out of that 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 piece right there. And it's in there. I, I've had the cheater pipes on it, and uh, I'm an old man. I just don't have the gumption anymore, I guess. So, thinking of... Uh, chucking this puppy up in the three jaw chuck on the lathe and locking the uh, head and seeing if that'll give me a good bite. So that's the next try. All I can do is damage it, I guess. Be back with you. Well, I got the fitting out. It took the old uh, torch wrench to do it, as you can see, but I got it, uh, got it hot enough so that uh, it broke free. And uh, you can see there's a pin, there's a cross pin in it that holds the fitting in the, uh, so the O-ring smoked for sure. Um, but uh, looks like it has a chance to get fixed. So continue on taking it apart. Um, ended up putting it in the vise between a couple of V-blocks um, to uh, secure it. Um, I had tried it in the uh, both in the lathe and the mill, and I couldn't get it to move without putting a good amount of heat on it. Okay, we'll be back, and uh, hopefully the, this part's going to be salvageable. So, so here, here's a look at the inside of that bore. So I'm going to uh, see if I can clean that up uh, a little Dremel tool with a uh, wire brush on it. We'll give it a shot. Well, the Dremel uh, cleaned it up nice. I'm going to see uh, see if I can do anything with uh, cleaning the threads up a little bit, just from the rust and corrosion. But uh, i got a buddy that thinks uh, the Dremel tools are just a joke, but uh, I bought a couple of them, really inexpensive, the extension shaft, and uh, they've, uh, they've come in handy. It's you know, like typical tools. When, they, when you need them and they work, they're the best thing you got. Anyway, back with just another little update. Um, so here's, here's all the parts at this point, the, the roll pin, the washer, the, uh, and this guy sits in there. And so the O-ring is on the inside of this. And just, uh, so you know, we, the, uh, somebody didn't change channels on you. This isn't Blue Hand video. Uh, if you haven't been to Blue Hand's video or Blue Hand's channel, uh, go visit Mike. He's, uh, does some really neat stuff. There's a lot of brake kits and a lot of machining. Anyway, uh, so pretty sure that's where the O-ring rides, of course. And uh, my memory is that this uh, top piece, you can see there's like a seam there. I think they come apart. But uh, I'm not going to try to fight it too much. Um, I think I'm just going to try to go inside there with the Dremel and clean it up so that the O-ring will sit back in there. Um, started to think about this and the, the fool, which is me, that worked on this X years back, uh, of course, uh, didn't put any uh, uh, anti seize never sees on this. Would have been a lot easier to take apart. Of course, I never thought that I would uh, be doing this again. Uh, but I think I will put uh, some uh, never sees on it this time. Okay, and if anybody was wondering what this white stuff's on my vice jaws, uh, that's what I used. I use that just to put the aluminum jaws in there real quick. Some double stick tape. Okay, just too lazy to clean it off at the moment. Be back to you shortly. Well, I got it cleaned. It's, it's cleaned up. The O-ring is basically right here within the body um, of this of this fitting here, and of course that's where it spins. But now I can see why the O-ring gave up its life. You can just see the corrosion there. From the moisture in the air and that's where the o-ring actually rides um, 
So I got to see if I can locate another another swivel that I can uh, change out. I don't think this is uh, this is worth repairing, um, or I got to come up with a little miracle method to fix it. Um, and that could be a possibility too. So we'll do a little checking. It's actually Christmas Day today, and out here playing in the shop, and uh, so there's no chase in it today. Now, although I can go on McMaster Car, see what I can find there. All right, hope everybody's having a happy holiday. Be back to you shortly. Just a real quick uh, on the Dremel tool. Um, I picked up this kit. Uh, it was a garage sale. Ended up uh, with all the different accessories and stuff, and there's more accessories up here in the lid. Uh, both uh, uh, two variable speed Dremel tools and uh, the uh, flex extension that you can actually hang the Dremel tool up in the air on that and use the flex flex wand. I think I got the whole thing for uh, 20 bucks. Heck of a buy and, and the tool's been really useful for me. Been happy with it. Okay, thought I'd just throw that in. And it stores away real nice. Well, here's the uh, here's the parts, um, or the part that's failed, and hopefully this will stay in focus. But you can see all the corrosion that's uh, occurred on this from just the moisture in the air wheel. And uh, this is the uh, where the O-ring sits in here. This piece captures the O-ring inside there and of course then it comes through and then the uh, roll pin locks the assembly together so it can spin so the uh, the question that posed to myself was uh, how do I repair this um, can I go buy a replacement part which I can't so um, my first thought was uh, try to go all a Keith Fenner and uh, clean this up and braze it and then return it on the lathe so I just have a new shaft and not have to deal with it. Um, I talked to uh, Tom Tom Lipton over at Ox Tool about it. His comment was, well, why not just uh, build a whole new part? And uh, of course, he's a machinist and he thinks like a machinist. And uh, I said, duh, that's, that's an idea. So that's... Uh, that's a possible fix. Um, I told him that uh, I had my heart set on brazing this, and he said, cool. Um, he goes, I like watching failed videos. It's one of my fetishes, so go for it. You always can build it. So I may still do it, make, make his day. It also looks like it's, uh, I don't know if this is showing up or not, but it looks like it's, this part is silver soldered. Uh, the nipples silver soldered in so it may be just a situation of uh, heating it up pulling this nipple out make a new nipple and silver solder it back in um, so I'm going to explore that also um, just because I'm a hack <laughs> excuse me as I hack uh, I went into my uh, fittings drawer found a steel fitting turned it down and and basically produced the same item there. Uh, this distance, uh, once it's pulled in, really won't matter because it's within the cover of the hose reel. And uh, then, you know, basically made the same length nipple so that it would do the, do the same thing and slide on and produce the same thing and just shorten that. So that's another fix. I may do it as a quickie so I can just get my hose reel back up and then go take it back apart. I don't know. So, uh, to further on this discussion, my machinist buddy Chewy, that uh, is my mentor, I showed it to him the other day and he had another way. He, you know, he said, turn it down and make a sleeve. Press the sleeve on and uh, then turn it, turn it to be the right diameter. Uh, another, another method of fix. So I thought I'd throw these out. Um, this will be a two-part video and uh, I'm going to call it quits here. And anybody else has suggestions, it'll be interesting. Um, so you can see the this this uh, fitting here is radius 
and then it's also has chamfers or yeah, I guess you call it chamfers or radiuses down off of the uh, face too and it's the way they I guess they designed this is that in one dimension you can get a wrench on the on the nut on the fitting nut here and then when it's this direction you yeah you really can't because I remember I was taking it apart one way you could get a wrench on it one way you couldn't and uh, as you can see the uh, the brass nut has been boogered up some in, and uh, of course it's been in my vise okay um, so be back to you if you guys got suggestions I'm open to hear it uh, in the comments uh, be interesting and uh, I'll be back to you uh, just one final item before I close this um, since I'm learning uh, CAD I decided to go ahead and draw this part the original part in CAD if I was going to reproduce it um, careful I'm told to uh, invert your eyes it may hurt your eyes <laughs> uh, somebody knows what I'm talking about yeah. but anyway so I drew a front view with the uh, center in the uh, the uh, bore right and left views and then a uh, bottom view um, so it's really did it uh, one just for fun to again uh, try to progress on my understanding and use of uh, CAD cool part about it is of course it you know I could pick up this radius point and teach me you know I wouldn't be able to know what that radius is but by doing uh, using the CAD and setting up circles I could figure out the radiuses and stuff like that and and some of the dimensions so anyway I thought I'd just throw that in having fun uh, learning uh, learning CAD and uh, making it a useful tool. Well, it's uh, New Year's Eve afternoon. I posted the uh, video uh, this morning and uh, geez, I want to thank Thank everybody for a lot of comments back, ideas, and uh, I kept bitching that, you know, to make the original part's going to take time, and uh, well, hell, it's New Year's weekend, and I got a lot of time, so I'm going after it. So I've uh, mounted the part underneath here, and uh, I did a little layout on the end of a uh, uh, stainless steel uh, rod that I had here. Um, I put a little center mark on it um, and then I've laid out the center of the actual nipple there so I end up machining that back uh, to create the nipple um, the so I, uh, I decided to to uh, when I was doing the layout on this I decided to I'm gonna pull the camera out here I decided to um, use my 5c chuck in a in a uh, 5c square block and then just put it in my vise and that way um, I could just uh, turn it over and, and use the um, uh, my brain use that tool right there whatever it's called <laughs> to uh, go ahead and measure and uh, lay out the lines so uh, it's basically ready I um, think I'm gonna go ahead and mill the flats on it first uh, probably gonna leave it in this setup and uh, and actually mill the flats back where they would be uh, back here go ahead and mill that and then uh, I can cut it off and then put it in the fore jaw to uh, finish it um, so that means I'm just gonna have to support this uh, on the uh, bed of the uh, mill table uh, as I as I go ahead and rotate the uh, the part of the vise okay so um, that's where it's going today so I'm going for it and uh, like I said I got lots of time and uh, shouldn't be an issue on uh, on getting this uh, getting this item built if that helps at all or not all right, be back to you with an update. Well, I've got the parts set up in the mill. This was 
my idea of how to set it up. So I'll be basically cutting the flats back here and uh, get this side down to it and then basically just 180 degrees on the square block, cut that, cut the other side and then flip it over in 90 degrees and knock off those two sides. So I'll end up with the flats, uh, make it a little bit larger than the part there that I need and uh, then I can cut it off and then go ahead and chuck it up in the lathe. Um, so I ended up uh, building a set of stack blocks, uh, spacer blocks uh, for the height, for the support, and uh, put a stop here on the back side um, so that the, uh, the uh, block will go back into the uh, same spot each time. All right, so I'll bring you back a little later again. Uh, just a uh, quick update. So I got the first, uh, first flat machined. Uh, now break it down and turn it 180 degrees and uh, cut, the, cut the opposite side. There's a total cut of about 152 thousandths. Well, here's the block. It's, uh, it's roughed out and uh, the key is the, uh, the wrench fits one direction but it won't, it won't fit the other. Whoops, not in frame there. won't fit that way but it'll fit that way. And that's just like the uh, the part itself. The wrench will fit one way, but it won't doesn't fit the other. So anyway, um, ready to move on and uh, start uh, start roughing out and getting the uh, nipple portion uh, built. Be back to you soon. This actually. Uh, this roughing out portion went out went faster than I had uh, had anticipated. Um, making thirty thousandths passes uh, seemed to work out really well with a half inch uh, three flute end mill. Uh, here's a shot of the part. Got it cleaned up, so it's ready to be mounted in the four jaw chuck, and then uh, it'll be shooting for the uh, upper. Uh, set mark there is our center for the uh, nipple and uh, start turning it so be back with you well i thought of a trick for maybe getting this part set up in the four jaw i took the original part and put it on a on a gauge pin and then of course put it in the chuck and then uh, brought the uh, four jaw chucks up just touching it so it at least get me in close proximity where i'm supposed to be so I thought I'd just show this and see if uh, I outsmarted myself or I smarted myself. Um, be back to you. Well, got it in the chuck and uh, starting to turn it. The uh, quick center that I used used the old part worked well, and uh, we're cutting, making chips. Be back to you shortly. Well, this pass will get it out of the interrupted cut. And now we're, uh, we're cutting uh, concentric on it. So uh, keep on uh, keep on cutting here. We got a lot of whittling to do, get down to that uh, 436 outside dimension. Well, just a little in progress here. Um, I'm starting to get down there, and I decided to go ahead and drill the center hole. Uh, it's an inch and a half deep. Uh, it's a size N drill. And uh, I'll just end up using the uh, caliper here on my tailstock uh, and go ahead and punch that in an inch and a half. Okay, be back to you soon. A little more in progress. You can see I got the center hole punched and uh, still turning down. Got a couple, uh, oh, about 400,000 still to go. And uh, that nipple will be completed. So just turn it away. Just go with 40,000 cuts per uh, pass. The part's getting pretty hot. You may have to stop for a while and let it uh, let it cool off. But uh, it's going well and uh, having fun. Be back with you shortly here. Well, the nipple's complete. It's perfect. Um, Why I was uh, finishing the turning as I got down. I was using this product, uh, Cool Tool, instead of the uh, sulfur-based oil, 
and uh, what a remarkable difference uh, you could see in the cutting in the heat dissipation. Um, so I thought I'd share that with you. It's not cheap, but boy, it sure it certainly is a good product. Okay, so uh, be able to take it out of the lathe here and move on. Yeah, a little bit of a rush here. Almost forgot to chamfer the uh, chamfer the front edge of the part before I took it out. So I just completed that. So now it's ready to pull. Uh, interesting enough, I picked this fitting up off my bench. You notice the other parts missing. Well, as I picked it up, it was loosely sitting there. And I heard a tick, and it hit my lathe someplace. So, a hunting I will go, a hunting I will go. I hope I can find it. Anybody see it? Uh, I think I'm going to be looking for quite a while. All right, catch you guys later. Well, here's the two parts uh, side by side. And uh, so, all I have left to do now is um, put the uh, pipe thread in on that face and then drill the uh, hole over here for the roll pin and then decide if I want to go ahead and uh, chamfer these down to uh, match this. Um, I may do it, see what kind of mood I'm in. Uh, my lucky day, it only took me about three minutes and I did find it. It was uh, actually in one of the holes in the mat. Um, I've uh, recently dropped a uh, brass headed set screw the other day and, and also a little spring for a, uh, for a drill chuck. And uh, those both got eaten up in this mess down here. Um, but today was my lucky day. I managed to find that. So I'm going to try not to lose it. So be back at it tomorrow. It's, uh, 8 o'clock on New Year's Eve, uh, been out here playing, and uh, time to go in the house and relax. Hope everybody has a safe and happy New Year's Eve, and i uh, be talking to you in 2014. Well, here's another quick update. Um, I've got the, uh, the hole for the air fitting uh, already drilled out. And I uh, got, got the uh, tap wrench set in here with a tap follower and going to tap for the uh, pipe fitting. Okay, be back with you soon. Well, just a, a quick shot here. Um, you can see the two parts there and I'm working on cutting the, uh, the radius uh, on the back of this, on the back of the part. So, I've got the first side done. And... Uh, that's coming in or not, but uh, turn it over and do the other side, and then uh, I'll be finished with it. Oh, I still got to drill the hole for the uh, roll pin. Just another little quick update. Um, just finished the uh, fitting side. Let's see if that comes in or not. Um, and uh, it's ready to be pulled out of the fore jaw. Didn't have much to hang on to there, but uh, wasn't taking a very big cut to boot. So, be back with you shortly. Uh, just got to get the uh, roll pin drilled in it, and I uh, think I'm done. A little cleanup detail. Well, guys, the uh, here's the uh, finished product. Um, got it all completed, and uh, maybe just a little more, a little more finish work to give us some of the mill marks. I don't think it really matters, um, but uh, it turned out nice. Had a lot of fun building it, and uh, there's the uh, there's the original part. The um, right here, you can see where uh, I find something to point with. Right here, where the chamfer didn't come across, and that was just because the uh, the piece of stock that I used in the beginning was just just shy of making the full dimension. Um, my other choice, of course, was to use a piece a piece of uh, stainless that I had. It was like two and a half inches, and I'm not going to do all that turning. But anyway, it's uh, it's done and. Uh, 
All I got to do is uh, find me an O-ring and put it all back together. Talk to you guys soon. Hey everybody, um, just wanted to uh, put a closing statement on here. Um, first off, uh, I'm glad I actually took the time to learn CAD or learning CAD and drawing the part. It really uh, helped me understand the part and understand it, understood understood understand it how to how to build the part um, uh, and and in building I saw a couple of uh, dimensions that I didn't put on my drawing but I did have in my chicken scratches that I had done earlier so anyway I thought I'd add that in a little bit of a closure here um, the um, I, I really just want to tell everybody that uh, commented uh, lots of different angles at attacking the issue and all all good valued comments and I really appreciate it um, the uh, you're probably going to see a, a follow-up in a, in a quickie um, I am going to either I'm going to try to, to braise this uh, and if uh, if it is silver soldered in there and it comes out then I'll make a nipple and uh, silver solder a new one back in um, just show it as a quick a quickie um, and uh, you guys all have my permission if I sit here and moan again about not having time to do something and all the time in the world is just being a, I think a baby and being lazy I had a blast building it good experience and uh, uh, it was one other thing I wanted to chat with you guys about and an old guy it's uh, passed my brain anyway uh, thanks again for uh, for uh, watching and subscribing and uh, see you on the next project. Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, I'm Chuck, and uh, this is a follow-up on uh, the uh, air reel video. Um, it's finished, and uh, I was, uh, I guess, smart enough to test my fitting before I put the uh, complete hose reel back together. And uh, that's what this video is about. It'll show you um, uh, the water test that I did, air pressure water tests that, that failed and, and the fixes. Uh, to make it work. Uh, I'm glad that I did do the test and didn't go ahead and hang the reel. It would have been uh, a lot of labor for not. Um, the other interesting part about this uh, uh, video is uh, using a machinable collet, uh, they're sometimes called emergency collets, uh, to uh, make a washer um, um, out of a copper washer, making a very small part out of it and uh, mounting it in the uh, machinable call it. So I think you might enjoy that. I'm going to have to apologize. The I didn't catch it, but the, the uh, camera did not focus when it was on the lathe. So um, it's, uh, I'm really mad that it, uh, it, it would have been a nice video there, but bear with it. Um, I, I think I tried to speed it up a little bit to get through it. Um, the part did, uh, and, this, and this is all, I've watched the video and, and I wanted just to give you a an intro to it. Um, I decided when I was cutting that piece in the uh, collet, I was more boring turning it from the inside than boring it. And when I got down to a small um, uh, tolerance on the outside, it actually bit on the washer. So then I managed to straighten it and finish it up and uh, do it in a boring fashion. Um, so anyway, I uh, hope you enjoy the uh, the video. Um, air reels back up and working. Uh, well, almost. You'll see at the end why I'm saying almost. Uh, other than that, uh, next part I got coming up, a uh, little video player uh, for my son. Uh, they lost the door to it. We happen to have another one of these, so I've got at least a model uh, to uh, build a uh, or a template to uh, build the part. So I'll be working on that. It'll be some fun, uh, some fun work at the uh, mill. Alright, thanks guys, uh, enjoy the video, and again, uh, apologize for the, uh, 
the poor focus. Uh, I'm going to get that cameraman fired. Take care. Well, I've got the fitting put back together. Here's the swivel. And uh, I thought I would do an air test on it first before I went and put the whole reel back together. So, and uh, what I found out, as you'll see here, is it's leaking. But the good news is, it's not leaking from the actual air fitting. It's leaking between this brass... Uh, brass fitting in the body itself um, so I've took it apart and cleaned it up a couple of times and it's uh, not repaired so I think I'm gonna have to build a, uh, a washer for in here uh, to get this part to seal um, so what I've been looking at doing here is I've got a uh, copper washer that's the right correct uh, OD it'll work but the ID is incorrect so uh, I think we'll be using one of these uh, uh, rescue kind of collets um, and uh, I'll show that we'll turn this uh, OD ID to the correct uh, correct measurement and then uh, put it back together and see if that uh, solves my leak issue okay be back with you thought I'd do a little follow-up on this. Uh, it's called an emergency collet or a machinable collet or a stepped collet. You can see that it's got a uh, machinable piece up here where you can create uh, your either your uh, deeper recess or a larger diameter recess. This one just happens to fit and this one has got a removable top so it comes off of the body. Um, I do have some other ones that are larger um, in luck of the draw uh, this one was close and I was gonna have to machine it but this one uh, I think is gonna work so I'll check it up and and uh, we'll move on but you can see how far this one's been machined back in Okay, well I took the part over to the mill vise, just straightened it, got a little bit of a wow in it, but it's back normal. So I'm just going back in and cleaning up on it. thousands to go. Probably the way I should have attacked the part, boring it rather than trying to turn it, hence why it caught.
Okay. Pop it out. Do a little cleanup on it and see if uh, put it back in the part and see if this uh, solves my leak. Be back with you. Just a quick shot to show you the the fit is good. Um, I don't know if it's maybe too thick for compression, um, but I'm going to try it at this thickness and put it back together, and we'll see what happens. Be back with you. Okay, here's a follow-up. Air's on, and uh, got it sealed up. Take and uh, turn the fitting, and the fitting's holding, and my copper washer sealed the... Uh, Seal the two together. All right, put the hose reel back together now. Well, the air reel is uh, back and reinstalled, but when I put the air to it, it blew a hose. Not bad for what? Let's see, I'm 60 and the dealership was there before me. So maybe about a 70, 70 year old hose uh, finally gave up the ghost. Um, so I have to get a new hose built for it. But otherwise, uh, the reel's back in place and uh, ready to be using, ready to be used again. Anyway, that's the close of this, this episode of the air reel repair.